So the first item is been pulled, and Nache, what are you doing with it? Uh, I'm going to uh, run my archers, or no, run my tomahawks. Your tomahawks, hey y'all. Yeah, I'm going to run them uh, as far as they can go, just straight on up. Straight forward? Yep. Now, they're they're got a special rule called woodsman, which means that it can move through, through these woods as if they were open terrain. Yeah. Um, I get I get a plus one cover bonus if I'm within the wooded cover, plus they treat rough wooded terrain as open ground. Yep. So your tenant so, will get you right here. There you go, sir. It's die to be pulled. On the first turn, a red die. That would be the Aztecs. I'm thinking I'm going to give my leader an advance order. Don't think, just attack. I'm looking at my spells here. Think long, think wrong. No, he's not going to do. He's not going to do any of those spells because I, I have to get these guys up. So. Um, my dead, um, they're just undead, so I, I, where's the undead special rule? I thought I gave it to you. You did? I forgot what it is. The undead, it's, uh, it's on your list right there, undead. Minus one to hit shooting close combat, minus one to break test if defeated by dreaded enemy. Dread units are immune to dread. That's dread. Different. Yeah. Rule. Undead. Undead. You never gave me undead. Okay. I thought I did. Oh, no. Here it is. Cannot be routed. Automatically resists choking and enormous attacks. Uh, immune to dread and terror. Okay. So they can never be routed by a break test. Right. Make them directly run to move. Okay. All right. So they move normal. I'm going to move. I'm going to run this unit of undead here. I'm going to run them. Let's see. I'm gonna run this unit ten inches. All right, they ran. Next die. All right, next die is a red die. Yay! Uh, I'm going to also run this undead unit, and they're going to run here. Okay, next die, white. Um, let's go ahead. We're just gonna do an advance. With? The, uh, the uh, Seneca archers. All right. Just gonna move them five straight forward or what do you wanna do? Yep, five straight forward. You're gonna go five straight forward with the archers. Puts them right there, which means some of them are going to be in the woods here. All right. They advanced so they can shoot. I can't see anybody to shoot at, though. They can shoot at these guys. Okay, well, let's do that then. I throw it up, so. Chris. Look at, uh, look at your ranges. I think uh, long range is... Within, and the long range of a bow is 10 inches. So you have in long range. So Hold here. Uh, bow is 0 to 10, 10 to 20. Yeah, so you're in long range. Okay. You move so you don't get the plus one. Uh, All right. You get a minus one because um, it's in long range. So the minus one is to your mo your accuracy. So whatever your accuracy is, you got five guys, so you get five dice. Okay. Whatever their accuracy is, which is six, I think. Yep. Okay, so it's minus one. No. For one. Yes. Yes. Seneca archers are six. Uh, so it's minus one, and there's no terrain modifiers or anything like that. 
uh, as long as you can see this first guy, I mean, I'm in the woods here, but that doesn't really give me cover because you can see somebody in front of the woods. I'd have to be completely inside to get a bonus to my res save. So you get five dice, D10s, five or less, uh, and, and if you get a five or less on any of them, you get a hit. Five you want me to roll? Yeah. All right. So I mean, five I can... D10s. Yep. Five or less. Just so happens I have uh, um, Warlord official D10s here. Five or less. Yeah, I've got three. Three hits. Okay. That means I'm automatically going to take a pin because I got at least one hit. Okay. So these little bejeweled things, since I can't find my pin markers, is going to be a pin. So you're using uh, Skittles. Uh, I was, but I ate them. So uh, now, <laughs> uh, so I got a pin automatically. So that's three hits. Now I got to roll a res save. Okay. For each one of those hits. And now, their res, their res is a five slash six, and that means uh, they have light armor for whatever reason. I guess because of their skin or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be. Oh, you got a minus one to your accuracy because of dread. Minus one to hit. No, well, I got a two, a four, and a four. A two, a four, and a four. So it went from a five to a four because I have dread. Right. You still, you still hit on everything. So um, I forgot to mention that. That's dread. So I have to roll three saves. So dread is an unlimited distance. If I see it, I have dread. Uh, Correct. Yeah. Minus okay. one to hit shooting and close combat. All right. So I roll three saves. My res is a six because of my light armor. And uh, I do not get that res of a six in close combat, I believe is what it is. I don't know. That could be wrong. I'll have to check that out. But I think that's why they have two different. Oh, no, no. It's it's if, it, if there's a weapon that ignores armor, their straight up save is a five. But the okay. light armor has plus one. That's why they put it in parentheses in the list. So here we go. I need sixes or less. So I failed one. I got an eight, a five, and an eight. So I failed two. So that means that I, I distribute the wounds evenly, which means two guys are going to die. Good shooting text. Now, D does you, that add additional uh, pins or no? No, it does not. It just okay. one, one pin for hit me. Now, if I would have lost more than half of my guys uh, in that shoot round of shooting, I would have had to make a break test. No, you don't. But because I'm undead, I'm, I'm immune to routing but I still have to take a break test. A break test can, uh, against the unit's command, stat modifier for pins, same way as a roll, roll a d10. Uh, the unit fails the test, and the unit suffers d6 additional pins and may either be destroyed or routed as a consequence. So they could still be destroyed, but they cannot be routed. You see what I'm right. saying? And they get d6 pins for failing a break test. So they still take the break test, they just don't run. Right. And these pins to any to the unit already has. If the unit's total number of pins is equal to the, or more than its command value, then the unit is destroyed. So my command value here is eight. So if I had eight pins, the unit's destroyed. Does that make sense? Run that by me one more again. Okay, you have a command value, a CO on your... Right. If I have that many pins, that root unit is destroyed. Okay. Okay. Um, if it's less than the command value, then it is routed, unless it has a special rule that makes them immune to routing. So as long as my my pins are less than my command, they will you know they will not be destroyed. Right. But they won't route. So there you go. That's why they still have to take break tests. Okay. So that was good shooting, Nache. I mean, I failed too. So <laughs> yuck. Now, next die to be pulled out of the bag is a red die, which means you're going to get the last die of the turn, Nache. And remember, you have the these blessings you can play, which is... A 
Okay, so I'm going to play a blessing. Okay, all right. And the first blessing of this turn, you can only play one per turn, and they go away. After a friendly dice is drawn, which it has, choose a single friendly warrior unit right here. Add back D3 models to that unit. This ability cannot bring a unit above its starting size. So that's my one use on this turn card, which will get discarded. So I roll a D3, which I have some handy dandy D3s over here in this little bucket, if I can find it. There it is. So how many do I add back? Three. So I'm only going to add two because I can't go above the starting size. So those two you just shot off, not Jay. I used the card and I brought them right back, sir. Yeah, but you can't do that again. <laughs> that is true. But I might have another card that maybe will make me do that. Or even a spell, you know. So I have to activate my Warlord. I have a spell that can do that, not Jay. All right. Um, the Curse of Servitude that brings him back. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just run my my Warlord. Uh, or no, I'll advance him, move him forward five, right into the center here, and that'll be okay. All so right. What we need to do with your Warlord? Um. Let's um, let's advance him straight forward. All right. You want to just do it uh, advance, no run? Correct. All right. And he'll move five inches straight forward, so he'll be right there. Knocking over trees on the way, and your buddies are along with him. Okay. Is that it? Yep. That, All the that's dice. it. Yes. So at the end of the turn, we have to look at our building the altar for the gods, and nothing happened there. At the end of the turn in which you build an altar and the enemy table half to, uh, or destroy an enemy altar on the friendly table half, you gain one victory point. Uh, I have nothing. Your secondary objective we do at the end of the game, or unless it says do so. So what we do is we normally we pick up all the dice. If it's a down order, if it's a run order, and your unit is fast, they can retain that run order, but they can't. And he advanced, that picks up. If it's a down order, you have to roll to pick that down order back up. So you would roll a command test, or and if you fail that, you would remain with the down order for that turn. So we're on turn two. How many turns is the game? Six turns, sir. All right. All right. And before any order dice is turned, I'm going to use my next blessing, which is after any order dice is drawn, which, oops, sorry, I'll draw one. That's you. I remove D3 pins from a single unit. Since I only got one pin sitting out here, I remove that one pin from this unit. And not you get the first turn, sir. Um, I'm going to aim and shoot. So you're going to give them a fire order? Yep. All right. Next, uh, call an aim shot. It is long range, right? Yep. So it's a minus one, but it's a plus one because you get that aim. And you're, are you shooting at the same unit? I'm yes. assuming these guys would have a res test. All right. So you're aiming and shooting. It's five dice. It's minus one. So you were at a six. Minus one for long range, five. Minus one for um, dread. So that would put you at a four, but you're a five because you got a plus one for just firing and not moving. And I've got three hits. Okay. I got a six up res. And I got two nines and a one. So you killed two guys again and gave me a pin. I should have put that pin there after you shot. All right. So did you remove the other pin? Yes, I removed the other pin with a, uh, the ever-changing blessings of the way sit number six. After any daughter dice is drawn, which was yours, I removed D3 pins from a single unit. He only had one pin on him, so I removed it. Normally, I'd have to roll a D3, but it was, since there was only a pin, I can only roll. The, you know, the lowest I can roll is one, so I removed it. Okay. We good? Yep. 
Okay, next die. It is a red die. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to give my Warlord... Um, oh, here's another really neat thing about Rally. If you rally a friendly unit, right, and it's successful, you can pull pins from other units within 10 inches. Let me explain. Here we go. Rally order. So when you take a rally order test to rally, ignore pin modifi modifiers. So you just ignore the pin modifiers uh, to the unit's command test. If the order test is passed, the unit removes uh, one pin. And because it's given the order, it can remove an additional D6 pins. So it's D6 plus one. Um, and when a unit makes a rally action, each and any friendly routing unit within 10 inches can also roll a D6 and remove that number of pins indicated before the command test, uh, before making a command test to determine if it halts or halts a route, if it halts a route. So if a unit is routed, you can have him make a rally, rally action. If he passes it, if that unit that's routing is within 10 inches, he, he, you got to you roll the command test and it'll stop them from routing. And a unit that has no pins, like my lead at Warlord, on it can make a rally action solely to rally other units nearby, if so desired. So, so he's going to make a rally order. He has a command of uh, eight. So all I got to do is roll eight or less, which I rolled a six, which I did. Uh, friendly unit gets to remove D6 pins, so I roll a D6, and I roll a 6, so that gets rid of that. And uh, magic, the way magic works, you give your give the uh, unit an order, right? And at the end of their order, like an advance or whatever, he can cast one spell. And he's going to cast uh, the Curse of Servitude. With a uh, melancholy sigh, the priest sacrifices the great and the most holy jaguar, spilling and spreading his mighty blood so that new life can spring forth and bolster his minions. So the casting value is a seven, and it's a range of 10 inches. So uh, I perform the rally action. So within 10 inches, the casting value is seven. So I need a seven or less on this die in order to cast this spell. So I'm going to try that. Five. I rolled a five, sir. Would you like to try to dispel that? Of course you would. All yep. you have to do is roll a, le a, a, a one through four, and it's dispelled. It doesn't happen. A one through four on a D10? Yes. And now I will explain to everybody who's... I rolled a two. Yeah, so you dispelled it. So that means it just doesn't happen. Okay. But for all of you watching, he would have to have a spellcaster to try to dispel. Um, and as long as he rolls lower than my successful cast, he dispels my spell. Now, what this would have done is a number of friendly undead warrior or undead monster units equal to the caster's magic level uh, within range. The effect, each affected warrior unit has a number of mo models equal to D3 plus the caster's magic level added back to the unit. They rise from the dead. So I would have been able to rise them from the dead, those guys that just died, if I would have got that off. But since you dispelled it, it's done. That's my turn. Next I roll. Next I pulled. It is a red. I'm throwing it your way. I don't know why. So this warrior unit, you viciously attacked like a wild animal. Um, you come into my woods. You come into my home with your <laughs> undead being beast. Now, good thing I took the pin off of them or they wouldn't have been able to do anything. But since you fired already... There's no way you'll be able to react to what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and run this unit here, 10 inches. And hope to God I get the first action next turn. Because I'm on his side of the table now. <laughs> so we have to give him um, during the orders phase, during any order phase, after an order dice has been drawn, a hero or unit within 10 inches of the hero of a hero. Oh, so you have to be in 10 inches of a hero. Not good. All right. <laughs> Go ahead of yourself. Yeah, I did, didn't I? That's okay. I still got stuff I can do. Next die. It's yours, not Jay. 
All right, I am going to Mm-hmm. I'm going on the assumption if I throw my tomahawk, it's gone, right? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Uh, I have you... unlimited tomahawks. Yeah, you got like <laughs> 20 of them in your belt. Well, apparently. Um, um, let's look at it. So tomahawks, um, hand-to-hand weapons. Mm-hmm. Doesn't say tomahawks and ranged weapons. I think tomahawks are only used in uh, closing in ranged weapons. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just do an advance order with them. Well, I mean, what? Here, what's... here we go. Here we go. It's, it says right here. Tomahawk has a strike value one, which means that it would take one away from my res. So if my res was a six, it would be a five. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's strength plus one in close combat and can okay. be thrown as a part of exchange of missiles when you're moving into close combat, but it cannot be thrown as a ranged attack. Okay. It's a very powerful exchange of missiles uh, when you're going into close combat. Hmm. Now, is there anything that – is there any detriment to me running – instead of advancing well i know i can't shoot but th these these aren't shooty troops no if you run you can only run into close combat you can sprint into close combat but here's why why you would want to hold possibly think about that you can run if you run 15 inches you will contact me there's no doubt in my mind you will contact me right here you would be doing a run order, but you'd be doing a sprint. You move your 15 inches, and then you have to roll for an agility test. If you pass your agility test, no problem. Nothing happens. You're not exhausted, blah, blah, blah. You're in close combat. If you become exhausted, that means you're going to take a pin going into close combat. The pins are bad in close combat. Right. Okay. But if, you, um... if you sprint, you can, you'll can you sprint into close combat. All right, so I am not wanting to sprint right now. Okay. Let's just do a normal advance. Okay. With the Tom Hawk unit? Yes. Okay. Advance of uh, five inches. Right there. All right. So timid. I would have ran those some bitches in there right away. <laughs> not with a damn, not with a pin. I'm not. Uh, well, you you wouldn't get a pin unless you failed your agility. What's your agility on those guys? Um, if it's a six, that's a good agility. That's you know. Yeah. Yeah, I keep. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's a six. I could have gone. Oh well. Life goes on. Yes, sir. So that is your order, just advancing? Yeah. All right. The next is a red die, and you're obviously going to get the last one. I've already played one of my devotions. If you have one, that would work. <sighs> we are going to... I don't want you getting near my leader, but if I run in there, this could end very quickly. Forget about it. They're going to do a run order. Okay, you're Warlord, sir. Hmm. I wonder. How the hell with it? Let's go ahead. I am going to play before taking an agility test for running, sprinting, or difficult terrain. I automatically pass the agility test. Yep, that's the card. Oh, 
So your warlord? That's My warlord doing. is going to attack that closest. Uh, What's he going to uh, do? Actually, can he get to your warlord? Uh, with 15 inches? No. He would okay. Stop. He would stop short about right here. Yeah, that's no that's no bueno. Yeah, the that that closest uh group there, he's gonna go in swinging with, with his dudes. Get some, okay. get some. <laughs> because he's got times three hand to hand. Okay. So, so this unit into this unit? Yep. Okay. You don't have to sprint to do that, by the way. Okay, no, I'll just run. But you you can sprint in there, that's fine with me. You could actually get to this crappier unit over here on a sprint. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Well, what is it? Sprint gives me 15 only, inches. And it only, I only get a pin marker if yeah. I fail the agility test. That is correct. And I'm not taking an agility test. No. So you, all, you automatically pass it. So, right. So yeah, let's, let's go to that crappy unit. Okay. And just start wailing ass. Now, I don't have any missile fire with those guys at all. Um, they just now, clubs. so this is the way it works. So you're running or sprinting into these guys. So yes. one person touches, they all touch, they're good. Now they come to fight. Okay, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Consolidate. All right. He ran. Run, run. Okay, so there now. Now we have to do an exchange of missiles, which means you're going to do a shooting attack with your tomahawks. Okay? Right. So that would be your accuracy with the tomahawks. Um. Yeah. So how many tomahawks do you have? Three. Yeah, just three. Okay, so you shoot me three times. Okay. Using accuracy of yes. five. Yes. Now I have dread. Which means you got a minus one, so it's yeah. It doesn't five. matter. I I I botched it horribly. I okay. got a six and two tens. Ooh, tens is an automatic fail. So you, that's the yes. Um, so exchange of missiles has happened. Now comes close combat. Now let me look at this real quick. Your old Thomas Hawk. Uh. Now this is based off of strength. Okay. Okay. Your tomahawks have given you plus one strength in close combat. Yes, plus one strength, and my six becomes a five now because it, it it's uh, a strike value of one. Okay. So let's say your tomahawk's a strike value of one. What that yeah. does is, is my resistance goes down by one. If it's a strike value two, my resistance goes down right. by two. So that's how armor and stuff work. So that's unfortunate because you could have thrown a bunch of pins on me before you. Yeah. <laughs> you charged me or whatever. So we, okay. So we did the exchange of blah 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 missiles. Uh, you charge, so you're going to get a plus one strength for charging, plus one strength for um, your tomahawks. So you're going to have a plus two strength on these hits. So I'm a seven. Yes, a seven or less on yours. One, two, three, four. So I need a uh, leaders needs his dice. I think the but, leader. But I'm minus one because of your dread. dread. Undying champion has light armor. He's tough, meaning can reroll one failed res roll. Yep. Cart result. Uh, okay, so if I have to allocate a hit to him, uh, I can I can reroll that. Right. Res roll. Okay. Oh, all right. So I'm rolling five d tens, looking for sixes or lower. Yeah. Okay. So I'm uh, all models and both both units on both sides fight whether they are touching the enemy or not. Uh, model strike one from hand to hand fighting, and it is simultaneous unless you are down. So we are simultaneously. So I have three red dice. Four. The, okay. So the the leader right here has a different strength i think so he's gonna have to roll a different color die um he well, has they're, they're the same they're all fives so yeah uh so i have one two three four five guys one two three 
four, five. These are all the same. There's color doesn't yeah. make a difference. So your strength is a six. Uh, my yep. strength is a five. So five or less. So I got an automatic loss with one of them. I got four hits. All right. I got a one, two threes, and two fours. So that all hit, right? Yep. Okay. So you have to spread your hits evenly amongst your guys since you only have three dudes. All right. Pay attention to your special rules. I don't know what they are. I believe you have tough. So you, uh, you'll you base, you're basically going to give one hit each to your regular guy and then one to yep. your leader no matter what. Right. So, so who do you want the two hits to go against? Go let it go. Uh, oh shit. Um, go against one of the regular, uh, damn it. So the leader can reroll a failed one, but yeah. he, he has what does he, and have he's going to two wounds. So he has wounds to special roll. Yeah. That means that he can take, he can take two wounds and he can reroll one failed. Let's go ahead and put both of them on him. Okay, so two on the Warlord and one on each of the regular guys is your saves. Now, how many hits did you score on me? Five? Five. Okay, so I have to all I allocate them evenly, and I've got yep. five five guys. So um, my res is a five now because of the plus one. I'll wait for my leader last. My leader will be the black die. He's a six minus one because of the strength, right? What now? Strike value. Strike value. They all have tomahawks. Right. So my regular guys are going to be a four or less. My leader is going to be a five or less because they're all six. They're all fives. On the on your res? I've been doing that wrong. My res for my leader is a six, but my res on the regular guys is a five. I've been looking at my leader's res. So I've been playing that incorrectly. So for everybody that – yeah, okay. So my regular dudes are going to be a four or less. I'm going to roll them at the same time. My leader's the black die. He's a five or less. Okay. So the fours or lesses, I saved all but one. So one guy dies. And my leader, I got a five, and I saved that one. So my leader is fine. Only one guy Okay, died. so I need to roll five or less on my guys, right? Uh, yes. You're, whatever your res is, I don't have any strike value on clubs, so yes. Uh, they all save a one, two, two, four, four. Cool. Uh, now we have to do, we add pins now. So I got one hit. <sighs> Remove any casualties after both sides have fought. You add one pin to each unit for every casualty. It is suffered in hand to hand fighting, including for any wounds suffered by models that have wounds. So I'm going to gain one pin because I lost one dude. Yep. Okay. Uh, and, for example, unit suffers three casualties, takes three pins. So that's what happens there. So I got one pin with that com close combat. So I was defeated. I must take a break test and abide by the result. All right. So the, the so break you can, test. You can go away, but you can't go away. You can yeah, be destroyed, can. but you can't run. That is correct. My command is an eight. So I have to roll an eight or less minus one for each pin. So it's a seven or less on one roll. And I rolled a seven exactly. All right. Close. So he is fine. So he, he uh, saved yeah, it. The, missing those tomahawk hits was bad for me. Yeah. The tomahawk <laughs> throws. Yep. So if we both agree, we can fight another round of combat. Let's do it. Mm. I don't know. Why? I've got a pin there. I may disintegrate here in order. So if we both agree, we can do a follow-up combat, or we can consolidate by five inches, which would benefit me more because I could get further uh, or consolidate one move directly away from you. You would do the same. Ah, screw it. We'll do it. Ooh, not as good this time. Uh, so you have a plus two minus one. So it becomes a six. Yeah. I rolled a five. For all of them? Two sevens and two nines. 
Ooh, so you rolled one hit. Yep. I rolled a 10. That's an automatic failure. My strength is a five, right? Yes. Yep. So you got so two I, hits on me. I got two hits on you. Uh, one with my leader, which is would really not make a difference uh, unless he had a different weapon, which he right. did. Oh, he does. He has a, ma a Makalotl. Hang on. They all uh, have a... No. Yeah. Yes. It's a strike value two. Okay. And it's strength plus one. So his strength was plus one. He he hit with the black die, and it's a strike value two, which means it's minus two to your res. Right. So you you decide who to put these on. So I'm gonna put your leader on my leader. That makes my res a three, but I get to re-roll. With tough. With tough. Okay. And then the other is going to go on my regular dude. One of my right. regular dudes. And then I have to roll one. So there's no strike value on a regular dude. Do him first, and then I'll do mine. Okay. So here I – we mean the – oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to roll. Um, my red one is needing a three. My blue one is needing a five. And I miss on both, so I'm re-rolling on – the Sakem, and he's dead. He has two wounds. Okay, yeah, he's got two wounds. Okay. So. One dead, two pins. One dead and one wound, correct? So yep, one dead, one wound. Die with and the one wound. And two pins. And two pins, okay. Now, I have, uh, who hit me? You, you, did your warlord hit me? With his it doesn't heart? matter. Okay. So. Uh, I'm taking it. These all are all my, the same. Okay, I'm taking it on my warlord then, because he gets to re-roll. Right. Or my leader. I know what you meant. An eight. So I'm re-rolling that. <laughs> uh, are you hitting me with the tomahawk? Yes. Okay, so five or less. I took a wound. I think that my leader's dead. I yeah, on on that one, he is. Yep. Your undying champion is dead. Okay, that's not good. Cool. So we both have to take a break test. Well, you use your leader's command minus the, the, you know. Yeah, uh, so I need a six or less. But but hang on. I have to do a six or less on my guys because I lost that leader. A unit is shot at and loses half its number of casualties in one combat. A blind stew by a special requires it. Units defeated in combat. A test is indicating a result. So I have not seen, I don't see anything here losing your leader that would make you take a break test, the leader of your unit. Hmm. Well, then that means that I do a break test on a four or less, even though they won't route. That's a one, I passed it. What about you? I rolled a one. We both passed our break test, so we don't route, not destroyed. Now we both consolidate a one move. Should have put that on my my lead, my uh, little guy or so, or one of my warriors instead of the leader of the unit. Uh, so I'm gonna move him five straight this way. Okay, and you're gonna move your guys straight back. Yes. You can move them this way. You can move them this way. Yeah, let's let's move them back towards uh, the archers. That way, or this way? Yes. This way? Back back towards the archers. So right there. Okay. Uh, right there. Okay. So that second round of combat was not nice. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. That sucks. But that leaves you open to attack now. So Yeah, it he, does. He, he's vulnerable. All right, so we're going to pick up all our dice at the end of the turn. Now, nobody had a down order. All right. I really like this game. All right. <clears throat> you have all these extra things you can do. 
I don't think we've gotten any victory conditions at all whatsoever yet. No. So first die, red die. Yay, thank God. Uh, so we're going to give our leader a run order. So he's going to run right here. You don't have to go the full 10, but he's going to run right there. And he's going to try to attempt to cast his spell. So I'm going to try to cast the Way of Ever Living Magic, which uh, a number of friendly undead warrior or undead monster units equal to the caster's magic level within range. So each affected warrior unit has a number of models equal to D3 plus the caster's magic level added back to the unit as they rise from the dead. Each affected monster unit divides this number by three, uh, rounding down and adds that many models back to the unit. The spell cannot raise a unit beyond its starting number. So what I get from this is uh, each affected warrior unit has a number of models equal to D3 plus the caster. So, so he's a caster level two, so it's a D3 plus two added back to the unit as they rise from dead. Each affected monster unit, so that's the, we don't have a monster unit. There we go. Okay, that works. So he's going to try to cast that spell on this unit over here that's pretty devastated, right? Yeah. Um, but after an order dice, is, I'm going to play this... Uh, Ever living blessing. After an order dice is drawn, which I drew it, you choose a friendly unit to take a free move action per the consolidate move rules. So I'm going to take that free move action with this guy with the consolidate rules, which means I have to move away, correct? Right. So they're going to move five inches back this way. Okay. But they're within 10 of him, so I'm going to try to cast it. All I need is a seven or less which I got on a two, you have to get a one to, to dispel this. Nope. Okay, so that went off, so I get D3, which I had a D3 and I don't know where I did with it, not okay? I threw it back. So D3 plus my magic level, which is two. So one <laughs> plus two, so I get three guys back. Obviously I'm gonna take my leader. Oh no, he's not undead, is he? Oh yeah, it just says anybody. So, and two, three, there we go. And he successfully did his turn. So the next die is a red die again. So, mm, no, it's a four foot table. I'm measuring the half point of this table. So, this is your half of the table. During the orders phase, uh, any orders phase, uh, after an order has been drawn, a hero or a unit within 10 inches of a hero or a monster declare build an altar action. Assign a down order that unit will uh, to that unit and enforce down order rules. Okay, so I'm going to give them a down order, and I'm going to say build an altar. I'm going to build an altar, and that's on your side of the table. I'm going to build an altar on your side of the table. I believe it is. Two feet. Yes, it is. Okay. So I follow the down order procedures, which means in order to get them to stand up again, I have to do a command test, which I use his command because he's within 10 inches. Uh, just, uh, it says here, uh, assign a down order. Okay. At the end of the turn, place an altar token in base contact with the unit building the altar. Altar tokens must be 10 inches from any other altar token. Uh, destroy a constructed altar through normal melee combat, which is which must hit only. The altar has no res to defend. A unit that successfully destroys an altar cannot follow up. So normally it'd be like a follow up consolidate. So I put this at the end of the turn, but they give them a down order to build this altar. So I will place it at the end of the turn. So that is their there go, not Jay. I'm scared because you haven't gone yet. There's a white guy. What would you like to do, sir? Uh, my tomahawk guys are going to. Um, we're going to go ahead and run straight forward. You know what? No. Yes. We're going to go ahead and run straight forward. So you're going to run straight forward? Yeah. From right to here? Yeah. Okay. All right, next 
next die. That's a white die. Your turn again. Now you can try to rally him. <clears throat> yeah, what do I need to do to rally him? Okay, to rally, you use your command, ignoring the pins. Okay, and uh, so whatever your command is, you, you got to roll equal to that or less. I rolled a six. The command is eight. Okay, so you automatically lose one pin, but you get to lose D6 pins as well. So obviously, these are what's gonna I go rolled. I, I, I lost six. <laughs> so they you rallied yourself, and everyone within ten inches that has, um, like in his command, basically, who has ten inches would be able to remove D6 pins as well. So that's actually a really good tactic if you got a bunch of units really close mm -hmm. and they've got a bunch of pins, you can rally them up and throw them into fight again. So next die is a white die, sir. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move. I'm going to advance my archers. Uh, archers. Okay. Toward uh toward the the uh, uh toward my sacum the, oh this way yes you're just gonna move them up a little bit yep okay and then if i can shoot they can't shoot through your own units but that's okay because you're no, not really well then I, I won't you're not, you're not really blocking them if you're shooting at this yeah i'm shooting that unit this, there you know and that gives me I'm behind cover. Yeah. Right? So just give me a plus one. So my dread and plus one. You get minus one for moving, but you're in short range. Oh, no, you don't get minus one. You don't get the plus one. So you're, and you're shooting at this unit here. Correct. Okay. So the dread is minus one. Right. The most of my mom are, well, more than half are in the open. So I'll give you that. Don't okay. worry about minus one for the red. Um, or no, that's for res. Never mind. I don't even have to worry about it anyway. Yeah. So it's minus one to hit, basically, because of the dread. Okay. Accuracy minus one. Uh, five guys. So I'm rolling ten dice. No, five guys. Five, five dice. Guys. Yes. Looking for fives. Five or less. Two hits. Okay. So uh, I'm going to allocate those two hits to my warriors there, which is a five res. Um, normally, I would get plus one of my res kind of if more than half of them were in the cover behind it, whatever. Right. Um, I, I'm saying you can still see them. The majority of them are in the open. So uh, it's just going to be a uh, – you don't, you're a dead eye, right? What's that? You have dead eye. Your whole unit yes. has a life question rule. What does that do? Uh, I don't know. You didn't send that to me. I did not. I'm sorry. I believe they have plus one while shooting. I forgot about it myself. So this is oh, a learning. Please. This is a learning game. So uh, these troops are expert marksmen. So when a unit with a dead eye shot rule shoots at shoots, it is allowed to reroll one missed attack each time the unit shoots. Okay. So you get to reroll one miss. So, so far we got... Yeah, it's still a miss. Okay. It was a six. Still two, five or better. That's basically what I'm getting here. So I got a five and a seven. So one of them hit. I'm going to get a pin. And one guy is down. Um, these Aztec raising the dead rules are pretty nasty. I, I would have to say you, you you need some sort of magic slinger on your side. Yep. To help. Like a medicine man, because if I keep raising these guys back to full strength, I mean, technically, this unit should be gone. Yeah. You know, and not back up to full strength. Now, I'm going to have to ask the question. I'm going to have to find out uh, if a warrior unit, I can bring back units, whether or not I can bring back the leader or not. It did not say specifically, so that would be a question um, uh, that I can ask Nelson and uh, the next time we talk to him. Right. Um, so that'll be something I will have to ask uh, with that spell, because that spell, the Curse of Servitude, just says D3 plus the caster's level added back to the unit. So Right. 
I'm assuming that just means anybody back to the unit, even if your leader is gone. So, but now we are at the end of, the, oh no, we got one more die left. I have this unit over here with all the pens. And of course they're going to rally with a command of eight or less. I got a 10. I failed my rally. Hang on a second. That is not good. So he's going to go down, remove one pen. And that's unfortunate because I have to give an orders test to take that back and put that back in the bag. So uh, I'll have to make two command tests on an eight or less minus one pin. So for each one, so it's going to be a seven or less. So it's the end of the turn. You don't have anybody down. So all your dice is going to go back in the bag. <sighs> what turn is this? Uh, this would be turn four, four? because I played, I played four cards, right? Yes. Yep. I, I don't know. I played three cards. So yeah, this would be. And you didn't four. play a card the first, first turn. Yes, I did. Oh. My first card yeah, and so my first so, turn. Yeah, so it's turn four. You've uh, played three I've cards. Heard. It's turn four. Uh, I added back D3 models, remember, because you shot me. Right. So you've played three cards, so it's turn four. Turn four. We've got, actually, three, more, we've got three more rounds to go. Uh, I think it actually might be turn five. I think you might be right about that, because I don't think I played one the very first round. Because I didn't lose them until turn two. You didn't actually shoot yeah. me. Did you shoot? Did you shoot me on the first turn? No, I don't think I did. Eh, four or five, whatever. Well, I'm going to say it is turn five for the okay. reason that I did not place anything on turn one. So what we have to do, okay, is we have to. I'm placing my altar token because it's at the end of the turn, which is right there. And I have to roll a seven or less to, okay, this comes back to the bag. I have to roll a seven or less or they stay down. I roll a six, so that goes back in the bag. And same here, I rolled an eight, uh, which is not good. So they're gonna re remain down because um, I had to roll a seven or less because I have a pin. Now, I believe, and I'm not, I could be wrong about that. Um, uh, when you take an orders test, and uh, rally orders, down orders. In many cases, down. If you deliberately order a unit down, no. A unit is ordered down, no. Recovery test. So units at the end of the turn with a down order don't automatically turn to order dice. The bag turn in phase. Instead, a recovery test is taken. So I fail the recovery test. If the order test rally is failed, the usual failure results apply, and the unit goes down and removes one pen. So they're going to remain down, but I lose a pen. Okay, so they're, right. trying to, they're, they're going to be down for this turn, this coming turn. That sucks. So I remove one pin because I brought that rotors test back, right? Right. Didn't I just read that? Let me look. I don't want to move on unless we look here. Um, oh, if the recovery, if a unit that fails a recovery test removes one pin, if it is any, and the down order is left in place. The unit remains down for the following turn and must test to recover again on the next turn. Okay, so uh, I pass with him. If, if it's passed, you remove one pin of the unit and it has any and return the order dice to the back. So yes, I do remove this pin. Good to know. And I built the first altar. All right, you ready now, Jay? Yep, okay, I'm gonna play a card. Okay, go ahead. Play your card. During the orders phase, before an order dice has been selected, choose any order die from the bag. I'm choosing one of mine. Very good. <laughs> Going to go on the uh, the archers there. Okay. You going to shoot that unit again? Um, no, I'm sorry. No, Tomahawk guys. All right. No, no, no. Yeah, stay, stay with the archers. Stay with the archers. You got to fire stay with the archers. Shooting at them. Yes. You got a fire here? Yep. Okay. Uh, they're bows. They're at short range. Um, I don't think you get a benefit from short range, do you? Um, I don't think you do. Hold on. Hold on. Looking at the ranged weapon. Uh, yeah. Huh? Why? Yeah, I don't know. It just says short range and long range. What does it? What does it matter? If it's well, got short range or long range, well, long range, no range, long, no difference. Long range, 
Okay, you get a minus one. Oh, okay. So I, I don't have a minus now. Yeah, there's well, no I've got the dread minus still. Yeah, you have minus one in your accuracy for the dread. That's it. So no. my, ac my accuracy is six, so I'm at a five. Yes. Five or less, but five dead. Oof. Four hits. All right. I have to, I'm going to just do all warriors. And you hit me, so I got to take a pin. Okay. So all of these guys are six or less. No, they're five or less. I had to think about that. Yeah, they're five or less. Uh, so I got one, a five, a six, and an eight, so two die. Okay, that's not more than half, but it's close. <laughs> and they got a pin. All right, that's two down there now, Jay. All right. So, pull a die. Pull a die. Be oh, ready. White one. Yes. All right. No. Yes. <laughs> um, you know what? To those who dare, my uh, Sakem and his uh, bodyguard are going in. To that same unit? Yep. Okay. So we start by throwing our two, our two tomahawks. Uh, hold on. I'm going to play my card, the blessings of the way. Prior to an exchange of missiles phase, you cancel the exchange of missile phase for both friendly and enemy units. Got it. So I'm coming at you with uh, four dice then. So moving you in. I have one pin already. So I'm coming with uh, four dice myself. The leader has a strike value. He'll be the black die. He has a strike value of two, remember, and a strength plus yep. one. Strength plus one with that. So these are five or less with the red, and it's six or less for um, the black. Right, and I was five or less. So I missed. Actually, I'm I'm four or less, right? Because of the dread. Because of dread. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I got one hit with my uh, leader, and I got one hit with a warrior. I got four hits. Four hits. Very good. So go ahead and roll yours first. Or I'll roll mine first. How about that? My second. Okay. So um, you got four hits. So that's even. Yep. So well, no, I, remember it's a plus one because of, or you're a minus one because of my strike value. Of? Tomahawks. Minus one. Minus one red? Our strike value to on Tomahawks. That's right. Okay. So my leader um, is going to be the blue. My leader has a six. He goes down to five. These guys uh, are a five. They go down to a four. All right. So uh, leader... He missed it. He's going to reroll because he's tough. And he still missed it. on a, No, he got it on a five. So leader's fine. Uh, I lost against one warrior. So uh, I saved two with my warriors. I saved with my leader. And I, lost, I lost one warrior. So I get one more pen. All right. So now I inflicted two on you. One is strike value two and the other one regular. Okay. Strike value two is going to go on my Sakem. Okay. Go ahead and roll that. And so he is res five goes down to a res three. With a reroll. Reroll. And the other guy is still a res five. Mm -hmm. So regular guy saves. Leader rerolls. He's dead. Your leader died? Game over, man. Game over. <laughs> It's not quite game over. You can still, you, you, you don't have to, you, listen, this game is played based on objectives. So yeah, if we were to uh, put them down and build an altar, we'd be even in victory points at the end of the turn. Right. It's won by victory points. So just because you're oh, yeah. now, so you won the combat because I have more pins than you do. Um, okay. So I have to take a break test uh, of my command of eight. Minus two, which is a six or less. 
I rolled a 10. That is a that's, big time failure. <laughs> that's a no bueno. Um, so uh, the unit fails the test. The unit suffers D6 additional pins and may either be destroyed or routed as a consequence. Well, these guys are undead, so they don't route D6 pins. I get D6 pins, not D10 pins. Uh, four pins, four additional pins. And you've only got two dudes left. I have my so leader, and leader and two guys. So I am not equal to my command yet. My command is an eight. So they're not auto breaking. It's less than, so normally they'd be routed. They're not routed because of uh, they're immune to routing. Yeah, then you do consolidate. So, uh, we're not doing fall, follow on combat. We're not doing an additional round of combat because I'm not agreeing to it because I got so many dang pins. Um, defeating units consolidate first. I roll randomly to decide which unit consolidates first. Okay, so I'm going to do a consolidate first. So, this is a five inch move, and I'm going to move them directly back right here. That's a lot of pins. That's ridiculousness. You would think because the, the leader does not have the undead special rule, right? Right. So I'm, that's a question I have, and we'll ask about that too, and we'll uh, in, in, in later videos. The leader is not undead, so he would route, but the undead guys will not. That's what I'm th kind of thinking. Wait, the undying champion is... Oh yeah, he's not undead. Okay. He does not have the undead special rule. He might. He might. Uh, let me look no, he does not. So he does not have the undead special rule. So I, I don't, I'm not sure if he would be routing and the undead stay and consolidate or what. But you get to consolidate five uh, a five inch move with your one little warrior left there. Yeah, he's gonna uh, jump back to the the archers or toward the archers. <laughs> So he's going to go five there. And he's going to enjoy the fact that, yep, my dude went down, but um, yeah, my dude went down, but I'm still alive. That unit took a beating. All right, so next die, hopefully it's one of mine this time, which it is, thank goodness. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going, first of all, and I already played my card for the turn good, I'm going to uh, rally uh, with my leader, okay? He still, has, right. he still has to pass the rally test, which you know, is an eight or less, which he did not. Sorry. So he failed that. He's going to remove one pin. So he failed the rally. I failed the dang rally test. That's ridiculous. How do you fail a rally test? I rolled a dang 10 on a rally test. It happens. Does not. Not to me. It just did. <laughs> All right, here we go. My warlord went down, and he gains one pin. No, he loses one pin. I swear to God, I just read he gains one pin. Read it again. It sounded. I thought you said you he loses a pin. That's if he passes. No, if he fails. Removes one penny, right? Okay. Because basically, what's happening is he is—he's still in the process of bringing himself together. It gets easier and easier as time goes by. Yeah, that sucks ass. <laughs> I was really banking on that, you know. Yep. Um. Okay, so since he failed his rally and went down, that's his turn. He cannot cast the spell. So, right. So, next die. 
Hopefully it's not tomahawks, and it is. And looks like those tomahawks are going to finish off my uh, big pinned unit there uh, with an exchange of missiles, more than likely. Or you can give them a down order to place an altar. We're gonna do, give them a down order to place an altar. Thank God. <laughs> down order, and you're gonna place an altar. Okay. So my unit here, they're going to use a rally action. Um, and it's going to be, uh, with, I ignore the pins doing a rally. I have to get an eight or less. A 10. You <laughs> I rolled another 10 on a rally. They go down and remove one friggin' pin. That is terrible. Terrible. All right. At least I removed one pin out of that. So my guys just love going down. So they're down. Now, I have to make a recovery test for this unit to take that die back in the bag. Okay? Same with them. Same with him. All my guys here, same thing. You have one unit down. So you'll have to do one, but you built an altar, okay? Each one of us is going to score a victory point. So one victory point each. Um, let's do a down order recovery test for your first unit, because you only got one guy down, right? Yeah. What do I got to roll? I have to make an orders test of an eight minus five. I got to get a three or less to put that down order back in the bag. Okay. Right. So I rolled a three. Thank God. And I lose one pin. That's it. My leader, he has no pins. An eight. He brings that back in the bag. These guys over here have no pins. I need an eight. Dang it. Get in the box. I rolled a nine, so they failed their down order. Uh, that means they retain their down order yet again. They're too afraid to come out from behind their little shelter. So now you have to roll theirs, whatever their leader, your leader's command in that unit is. Um, An eight. Minus well, nothing, right? Minus nothing, no pins. Two. Two. So you're fine. That door dice goes back in the bag. So I still have that unit over there that's recovered several times. <laughs> or not, hasn't recovered is the only one. Okay. He's the only guy. All right. I'm doing two things at once here. Okay. So now we're on the last turn of the game. Yes. And I pray to God that the first die that is pulled out of here is one of mine. Oh, you got to be kidding me. All right. I had a card I could have used during a combat. That would have been nice. All right. First die is a white die, of course. All right. Um, my one dude. Mm -hmm. Your single guy back there? Yeah. He's going to go up and kick your altar down. Oh, he's going to go attack the altar? So he's yep. going to do, gonna do a, a, a run order. Because you have to run into close combat. Yep. And you can only do hits in melee. He's got a pin, one pin. So go ahead and roll for a he hit with a six. All right. So that destroys that altar. All right. Next die out of the bag. Please, please, please. It is a red die. Thank God. So we're going to attempt to do this with our leader. We're going to rally them with our leader again, right? And our leader has an eight plus. Or an eight. A two. So he rallied. So everyone within 10 inches. He gets D6 as well. D6 pins as well. So hopefully this helps. Three. So he gets to remove three pins. He's down to one pin left. Thank goodness. And he's going to sling a spell. So I'm going to give you the opportunity, even though you need a spell player to dispel this if you want. Seven or less to bring back more dudes to that unit. 
I got a one, so it automatically passes. You can, you obviously cannot uh, dispel that. So he's going to bring back D3 plus his magic level. So two, so four guys come back. <laughs> That's garbage. <laughs> That's garbage. All right. <laughs> Like or ex pardon me for our British our British viewers. That's rubbish. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next die is a white die. All right. So uh do my archers see the guys that just popped back to life? Um I mean, yeah, they can see them. You got a guy kind of in the way, but not. You got the one inch rule between the so yeah, you can shoot at them if you want. Okay. Five yeah. dice. Hold on. Are you over 10 inches? Yes, you are. That's long range. Yep. So I am needing fours to hit, right? Minus, no. Minus two. Yes, fours to hit. Because my. You can reroll one miss because you're dead eye. I got four hits. Poppycock. <laughs> <laughs> um, give yourself. Get, get, give Where yourself a. Uh, Oh, I, uh, what? Um, a pin. Yes, because that was it. All right. So I guess I'm going to put them on all my warriors here. All right. And that's a five or less. Oh, I missed three. So three go away. I brought four back. You just, you hit three. So there you go, Nache. So that was a, Fire order, correct? Oh, you had a plus one on that, by the way. Because of the fire order. Yeah. I, I, the other one was a nine. Oh, okay. So you missed it anyway. All right. yippity dippity da. -dip. So I got one more die in the bag. You've got one more die in the bag. White, 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 white. Yeah. Tomahawks are going in. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to uh, smack you with a with fire first. All right. Needing fives to hit. You're running in here. Uh, I only got two this time. Two hits, so I get a pin for yep. sure. All right. And if there wasn't dread, it would have been three. Yeah. Well, you're, we're dreadful. All right, so you got two hits, you said? Yeah. All right, here we go. These are five. Oh, you get uh, your tomahawks have a... Plus one. Strike value one? Yep. Okay, so fours or less. So an eight and a ten. So two die. This is potentially very bad. All right. So I got two guys in close combat, and you have five. Yep. So my leader, my leader is a strike value two. He'll be the blue die, and my warrior will be the red die. So and I'm needing fives to hit. Fives to hit for me too. Okay, my leader missed. That's great. And my warrior hit. Okay, I have three hits. Three hits. Okay, so I'll take two on my warlord and one on the warrior there. So <laughs> you you got one hit. And it's just a regular hit. No strike value. Roll a five. So you res a five. Okay, so you passed. You're no problem. All my right. Res is a four. All right. So my leader is going to be the red dice. And he needs a five. A five because they're plus one strike value. Yep. And this guy right here is needing a four. Uh, so he, the warrior lived. And the... Uh, leader uh, missed one, or he got one and missed one, so he's going to reroll because he's tough. And he rolled a nine, so uh, that he did. Did so that's another pin with one guy left. I lost, so I have to do a break test. So that's his six minus four. So I got to get a two, or they're automatically gone. I got a one. <laughs> Sorry, not Jay. <laughs> That's okay. No, hey. 
it, it's 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 uh, serves you for those two tens on uh, rallies you rolled. Oh my gosh! Fixing what happened here, he would have had to take a break test because I lost more than half my units uh, with this leader left in here. More than yeah. half my units shooting, so that would have been a break test automatically. So we'll try the eight. He failed it, so. Uh, he would have they 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 would have um in shooting they would have routed but they can't route they can't route um so that's fine and then i passed my break test so i'm not going to take the d6 pins but i lost combat so i consolidate on real that uh this one lonely guy so you can consolidate your movement of five as well not jay um, I'm going to move back to my, uh, totem. Your altar? Yeah. Okay. All right. The run over. Okay. So your warlord being dead, uh, doesn't make a difference. Does so there's only one die left in the bag. Uh, that's this fella here. He's going to rally. He needs a six or less to do so. He got a seven, so he failed that rally. So he's going to take one uh, away, and he's going to go down by himself. Yay, zippity. I have not – I have failed my last three rallies. The last three. So, okay, so recovery test to bring these down order. So this guy is going to go back in. That was the last turn, was it not? Yeah. So you get one victory point, correct? Um, I actually get two victory points. Okay, why is that? Because of my secondary. For oh. every for every one victory point, I get an additional victory point. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So you're going to get two this round. So you right. got a total of three victory points. I got a total of one for that one turn. And my secondary thing was the corpse. <clears throat> uh, the Pardon me, the corpse thing. I had to have corpses at the back of your line, which was next to impossible to do. But uh, there you go. That is uh, our learning game of Mythic Americas. Uh, warning everyone right from the beginning, we probably got some things wrong or incorrect. And if we did, we will correct them. Uh, we'll continue to play this uh, for sure. Oh, absolutely. And, I, I had a fun time. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. Dude, any, anytime I'm hanging out with buddies and rolling dice and pushing figs, even if it's virtually, I have yeah. a blast. Yeah. Um, what about, what do you think of the game so far? I like it. Uh, there's some there's some uh, conventions of how it's played that I got to wrap my brain around, but you know that'll happen. It'll it'll come around. See I, I see the potential. Two. I see the potential. Now now he rallies. Yeah. At the end of the game. This one here, a three. Now he rallies. Yeah, of course. <laughs> At the end of the game, he, he would rally and take the down order back. Um, I love the card mechanic. Uh, That's cool, yeah. The the blessings are awesome. It and definitely the, puts in a, a, a different spin. I honestly, mm -hmm. I'd like to see it in, uh, added into Antares and possibly even uh, uh, the yeah. Erewhon as well as uh, uh, Bolt Action. Yeah, it would be pretty cool if they added to bolt action. Um, I like that scenario. That's a good learning scenario, I think. It is. Um, but the Aztec ma magic uh, in the ever-changing instead of ever-living is a lot deadlier. There's yeah. about four spells for you to choose from in there. Um, I like this one where it keeps raising dead. I really liked it. Yeah. You had your devotions too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was yours? Oh, yeah. You, you for every victory point. Yep. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. Actually had a really good time. <laughs> and I can see uh, where it is a very fast play game once everybody knows the rules. Yeah. And, I, and if I had more units on the table, which I am, I'm working on it frantically painting um, more of these units. Can you imagine having a, you know, you can have up to 10 archers, I think, in a unit. Yeah. 
And can you imagine having 10 of those guys? <laughs> or even 10 undead? I think I was being a little too un uh, timid on my guys because they're close combat dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I should have ran up um, my dudes uh, a lot sooner and hit you in the face. I was afraid of those tomahawks. But the fact that I can revamp units, you know, and keep adding more to uh, with my spells and with the cards that I have. I mean, that's – keep raising the dead. I, I, I'm going to get as many of the undead in each unit as possible. Yeah. Um, and yeah. There, is, there is that one rule that we need to check about these guys are undead, but the leader is not. The undying, right. the undying leader is not. Would he break? Uh, if they break and they route, would he route, or do they all have that undead rule? Right. With them, that's something I will ask about. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, I put enough varnish on these guys to where they won't peel off. Because the paint jobs, I really uh, work my butt off on. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, they're metal. I always get worried about that. You know. Yeah, I understand. But uh, that's it. Thanks for joining us, guys. It was a lot of fun. Uh, that was our learning game. Once again, we probably got things wrong for a little while. So um, please be nice. Please be nice in the comments. And uh, we'll catch you in our next game, which will, you know, we will have a good grasp around it next time. So uh, thanks, Anjay, for joining me. Yep. Ta -ta.